Julian, can I trouble you to play the opening few bars of the Bach Cello Prelude just so people know what we're talking about? Sure. Is asking a cellist to play that like Billy Joel being harangued at a Christmas party to play piano, man? <laughs> Not at all. No, no, we, we love all the Bach suites. They're fantastic. The thing that I find playing a piece like that that's so familiar, there are so many different ways you can play it. It's always a difficult decision how you'll play it on any given day. So just to then say go through that opening yeah. few bars again. Okay, yeah. so give us an example of like the different choices that you might make in playing that. So, so you could play it with a big cello in. <laughs> Or you could choose to play it much more with a rolling tempo. Or you could choose to play it with big long bow. This piece of music, when you see it written down, mm. is not that difficult a piece. An intermediate player could get through that from beginning to end. What is the difference between getting through from beginning to end like a technical exercise versus having musicality in it? Some of it comes down to that comfort, really feeling like you can sit in the sound and give all the harmonies and all the notes and the, the, the parts of the music that you'd like to bring out, you give them air to breathe. I think the great thing about the cello is that you can sing so well on it. It's so much in the human register. It's one of the instruments, the only instruments I think that you really embrace when you play. It's resting on your heart so you can feel the vibrations. You've got a couple of cellos that you play. One of them is older than the other. Mm. What would cause you to choose to play one over the other? It's not entirely the age, but there is something I think about the instrument having been in this form for such a long amount of time. It's carved out of multiple blocks of wood, it's got this spruce top. The, the cello is, it's basically an acoustic amplifier. It's just using all of these pieces of wood together to amplify the sound. And there's something about the age of an instrument that makes it feel very comfortable in itself. Yeah, younger instruments, they change more rapidly, these, you know, beautiful old ones. They have more brain, more texture to the sound. And, and for us as performers, we play in large concert halls uh, without amplification. So the, the instruments we play, they need to be able to throw the sound to the back of the hall. There's something about these old Guarneris and Stradivariuses that are really good at that. An old cello like this, you have to adapt yourself to work with this instrument. It has very strong ideas about how certain phrases should go, certain notes should sound. Sometimes a younger instrument, this instrument, it does what you ask it to do. It's even across the register, it's easy to play. The mind boggles at how many hands this cello's been through, yeah. It, it's great to think about instruments in that way. What's this little black dot on here? The, I call that the Cindy Crawford. <laughs> That's a wolf note eliminator. So with these lower instruments, sometimes the frequencies sort of fight across this soundboard and we can use this to change those and make the frequencies more clear. How long does it take for moving your hand around where it's not a crapshoot every time, you know, asking for a friend? Oh look, it's an ongoing concern, yeah. <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> so really you never get to a point where you're absolutely certain that every time you move it's going to land exactly right? You develop a certain level of confidence <laughs> that your hand's going to go to the right spot. Yeah, there has to be a lot of trust. <laughs> Is it just a straight muscle memory issue? A lot of hours under the belt certainly helps, but I think there's that real feeling of connectedness with the instrument. We try and practice so that you're not thinking about technique. In an ideal world, you're just thinking about the music and your body knows what to do to produce the music. That's the end goal. The left hand changes the pitch, but of course we can do all the expressive vibratos. Or none. And then we can play multiple notes at the same time. But really, if, like a singer, this 
is our breath. So people can hear the difference. Can you play that same sequence of notes again, just play it really straight and then play it with the feeling that you just sure, submit it with? Sure, sure. So... Cello is one of the most beloved and popular instruments. Why do you think that is? There's something about the nature of the sound, the register that it plays in, the way it moves, that can just tug at the heartstrings. So does the popularity of the um, cello ever cause you to get the stink eye from the other less popular instruments like the violas, a bit of envy? No, everyone loves the cello. Yeah. <laughs>